This is Electronics 102 DC Electronics. You're sitting here watching me in front of a whiteboard discuss some things about electronics. And that's kind of good and kind of bad. Let's go over some key ingredients that will help us when we're troubleshooting and solving problems. When we look at DC Electronics, DC Electronics has a few things going for us. And it actually has a few bad things going for us. But I want to go over some fundamental concepts here. Now, I understand that on the uh, internet and in textbooks that you have and the PDFs that we've given out, that there is a whole bunch of information that we have on all of this stuff. So let's take a look at something called the scientific versus engineering notation. What we really want to do is talk about some of this to make heads and tails why we do what we do. So. When we look at this type of outline here, this is engineering notation. It is a power raised. And this is our base unit here. This is our base unit. And anything to our right is going to be all negatives. We're going to be less than zero. Anything greater than that will be plus. So how does this affect us? What are we talking about with this? Well, what kind of Examples can we talk about on this one? I know. Let's talk about money. How much money do you have in uh, your wallet? Come on, anybody can say something. It doesn't really matter to me. What do you got? Three dollars. All right, so we got three bucks. All right, so that means I am right there. All right, who else? Just give me a number. I, I really don't care. What do you got? Oh, <laughs> 20 bucks. All right, we're going to have to make some numbers up here if I don't go along. All right, how, how about you? No, no, no. You, you got two grand. Oh, yeah, yeah, two grand. Okay, there we go. 2K. So you got two grand. You got two grand going on there. How about you? 47 nickels. Nice. I like that. 47 nickels. Great. So you see the problem here. When you ask somebody how much money they have, they give you an honest answer. $2, $3, $20. Bucks. It all comes out the same. But notice when we heard... Somebody in the back make up the number of two grand. What was the very first thing that they said? I've got two grand. Notice he didn't say two thousand. And why didn't he say two thousand? And the reason he didn't say two thousand was, in essence, it was easier for us to shorten the value to make it an easier, knowledge, more knowledgeable, and easier way to describe that situation. We do this every day just about every day when we go to the grocery store and we buy a dozen eggs, right? You don't say to the grocery store clerk, I gotta find 12 eggs, where, where do you keep the eggs at? You, you say, hey, I need to get a dozen eggs, where are they at? So we have already, from a definitional standpoint, have said, hey, I need a dozen eggs. When I go 47 nickels, that's an erroneous number to me. That doesn't apply to what we have. And so when we look at engineering notation, engineering notation is always based upon thousands. Okay, so when I go from one, the ones column to the three column, I don't know why I put a, a negative there, but I've got a thousand time difference. From the three, ten to the third, which is a thousand, to another three added exponential power-wise given to that, it's a thousand time increase there. So what that means is it allows me to crunch these values down into a variety of areas that makes it easier for us to understand. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to erase our money and I'm going to put our units that we usually do. Now in electronics, on our base units, we are going to measure voltage, current, and resistance. Those are our big three. They all are used for, I would argue, the most important of values the watt for wattage, the amount of power that's consumed. So, hear me out. If I have a thousand times greater than the for the volts, it would be the kilo, K volt, K amp, K ohm, and K watt. Now, you got the kilo ohm, the kilo amp, kilo volt. Already, there are some values that are not going to be used. They'll be somewhat used in some very specific applications, but we're looking at the 99% of our daily world. Let's go to the next unit here. We're going to go to the 6. That's mega. That's an uppercase M. Megavolt. Mega amp 
mega ohm and mega watt. 10 to the 9th is giga, gigavolt, giga amp, giga ohm, and giga watt. All right. Let's go to the minuses, less than the zero category to see what we've got. Lowercase m for millivolts, milliamp, milliohm, and milliwatt. How about six? What is the unit for six? Anybody? I, I know the, the recorder's going, so we're going to be all right. Fine. Micro, micro. There's your little mu for micro, 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 micro. And we got microvolt, microamp, microohm, and microwatt. There we go for that. How about 10 to the 9th? Don't all shout out at once for me. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nano, nano. Here's an easy way to remember it. Nano means nine. That's the best I can do for you. Nine. Pico, 12, has nothing to do with 12, so that's the easiest way to remember it. Most folks, I, I don't think, will have any problems with the milli. Micro, now nano for nine. Pico means absolutely nothing to us. So it's got to be Pico's 12 or we're going for it. So we've got Pico. So what I want to do is let's fill in the rest of this, V, V, Y. <clears throat> there is our complete window of range that we can have. Scientific notation would be 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third, 10 to the fourth. Engineering notation is allowing us to consolidate stuff. If I go back and I look at voltages. Now, I know that as some of you will watch this video later, you're going to say to me, Chris, I work in the power industry. I get into the kilovolts and megavolt range. All right? I'm not disagreeing. For our day-to-day -day world, what we're going to see 90% of our time, we are going to see these values right here. And the absolute most common, most common voltages that you are going to really need to beat inside of your brain is going to be the volts and millivolts. These three really predominantly make up the vast majority of voltage measurements that you're going to find just about anywhere. Obviously, there's exceptions, but that's going to be pretty much it. When we look at, look at amps, this is our big player as well. Amps, milliamps, microamps. Again, computer science folks, computer repair folks will see stuff in the, the micro nanoamps, picoamps now, not uncommon. You're not going to see a whole heck of a lot of amps on the other end. You could if you're doing some really sophisticated welding, I suppose, but this is the window of opportunity that you're going to see there. When I look at resistors, this one branches out a bit more. When I look at resistors, I'm really looking at these windows right here. I would venture to say you're really looking at the window of milliohm, ohm, k ohm, and mega ohm. And if I had to really truly define that further, I would really say the vast majority of our work is going to be in that range right there. Why do I say this? All right, you've sat in lectures in other classes. You've probably read through the book and the online stuff. When you go out and work on a problem, and there's a variety of resistors that are going out there. You're swamped with a problem that you don't know how to fix. You have a new machine you might be working on you've never seen before. Give yourself enough mental horsepower to solve that problem. Look at this thing. 90% of my time, I know when I'm troubleshooting a circuit, I'm going to see K ohms and ohms. Guaranteed. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If I'm dealing with wires, the running of wires, and conductivity of those wires, I'm now dealing with milliohms. But I don't usually live in that realm. Most of my realm is there. When I get to wattage, hey, let's be honest. Most of my wattage is in this range right here, milliwatts and in watts. Hey, do they make kilowatts? Absolutely. That would be the single difference that I would make right here is milliwatts and megawatts are used for power. Okay, that would be the lone exception. If I'm talking electricity, I would be kilowatts and megawatts. If I'm dealing with electronics and small surface mount stuff, I'm usually dealing with watts and then milliwatts. So that gives me an idea of how to do that. Now, a couple of things that I've seen throughout my time here on, on using the engineering and notation and movements of these variables is let's do a couple examples here. And let's do an example looking at volts, ohms, 
and amperage, shall we? So right about now, we're going to get our breadboards out, get our multimeters out. We're going to set our power supply up, and we're going to do a fundamental circuit. All we're going to do, we are going to take a resistor and hook it up to a 5-volt power supply. 5-volt power supply. Grab a resistor. I don't care what it is. I don't care. Just grab one out of the bin, and we're going to hook this circuit up. So we've got our circuit set up just like this. i got 5 volts here. I've got plus side here, minus side here. Electrons leave the minus, and we call this electron flow. Electrons leave the minus side, go through my... What is this? Load. That's right. So we've got current flow that goes through my resistor and back here. And so what I look at here is let's take some measurements. And let's take some measurements right here. So I want you to set up a 5 volter and then I want you to put a resistor in. All right. So I'm going to hit uh, stop and then we're going to go over this here in a second. But what I want to do first is to remember if I have milliamps of current, I'm going to make a number up here. 4 milliamps. How do I convert that to a base unit? Oh, i got to remove three zeros. So I put three zeros from it. So if I go 4, I go 1, 2, 3. So 4 milliamps would be 0 .004. We're going to cover that. I know there's many units out there. I don't want to drive that too far, but that's a big one to remember. We're going to hit pause here, and we're going to look at an Ohm's Law circuit and talk about measurements and verification here in just a second. So that gets us through this first part of our system.